this is the Sony NEX FS100E Super 35mm HD camcorder. And it's all about that large CMOS sensor, right there. The FS100E chassis is supplied without a lens as standard, but you can opt for the FS100E K package, which includes an 18 to 200mm lens like this one. The camera has a 3.5 inch flip up viewfinder, and you can position it left or right. You can even turn it right round, clip it into the chassis, and look down on it. It's actually not dissimilar to the viewfinder on an EX3. As standard, you also get a monocular viewfinder that sits neatly over the top of the screen and clips on and gives you a magnified view. It works really well and allows you to make fine focusing adjustments with ease. Now the monocular viewfinder also has a hinge, so you can attach it and then flip it up or down depending on what you're shooting. What we did find is that with the monocular viewfinder attached, the whole thing is easily moved from side to side so you need to be quite gentle with it, although there is a wheel on top of the unit which will stiffen the viewfinder to keep it where you set it. You can add a microphone and handle attachment, and the unit plugs into the side of the camera to the rear, and you can tidy the cable using the clip provided. And finally, you can add a hand grip, which screws neatly onto the side of the chassis. And you can adjust the angle of the grip to suit your preference. It has a remote start-stop button, and you attach it to the chassis with the cable and plug. And again, there's a clip to tidy the cable. What you immediately notice about the FS100E chassis is that it's absolutely covered in buttons across two faces. Here are the lens type functions, the camera controls are here, and on top are the audio and playback controls. So let's run through the controls, which although at first glance look quite intimidating, are actually well thought out and reasonably ergonomic to use. The first thing to note is that the lens doesn't have an iris control ring on it. The E-series lenses have an electronic iris, which on this camera is adjusted here with this thumb wheel. This button turns the iris between auto and manual, and there's a button below to instantly select auto iris. There is an expanded focus button, and a switch to select manual or auto focus. Finally, there is a push button here for selecting instant automatic focus. Moving to the rear of the chassis, what you can see is that there are actually six buttons along the top. Handling Zebra, Histogram or Waveform Monitor, Smooth Slow Record, which enables the high speed recording, which is buffered. You have Peaking, Markers On and Off, and a Last Scene button for reviewing the last clip. You have Gain, Shutter, Slow and Quick Motion, which ranges from 1 to 50 frames per second. These switches are for Gain and White Balance Selection, and there is a white balance button just behind. Now the menu is selected here, and this thumb wheel allows you to scroll through the menu functions. You can choose picture profiles here, and you can choose what information you display on the LCD with this button. And finally, there is a full auto or manual slider button. On the top, you have all your audio controls, with mic or line, input one or two, auto or manual, and rotary level controls. To the right, there's a section of, if you like, VTR controls, which rather resemble the controls on a video Walkman, but are really easy to use. With the expanded focus function, you get two times magnification on what is already a pin sharp viewfinder, with no visible pixels when viewed naked, as here, or with the attachment added. Now, with the peaking function, as you'll see here, the focus on red is incredibly accurate. It's really easy to see when you're in focus, and so both features are really useful with a camera of this specification. The Sony 18-200mm lens, supplied with the K version of the FS100, is f3.5 to f6.3, and is, in reality, quite a slow lens. But it is relatively inexpensive, and is really quite versatile and the FS100 is so sensitive that it more than compensates for the slowness of the lens. So we think it's a worthwhile purchase. 
And with that big sensor, it's surprisingly easy to achieve nice shallow depth of field with this lens. So the truth is, if you're going to buy this camera, it's well worth going for the K version with the 18-200mm lens. You can of course go for PL mount lenses such as a Zeiss with an MTF adapter. And remember that Berger are also producing a mount for the FS100, allowing you to use EF lenses and still maintain control of the electronics and aperture. So, there it is, the Sony NEX FS100 K package as it's supplied, ready to go. All you need to do is to add a memory stick duo or SD card to record onto.